The following presentation is a production of Ride the Wave Media. Step into the world of A's for Adversity, a podcast where we explore the journey of motherhood. Join us weekly as we navigate the intricate garden of self-discovery amidst the trials of motherhood. This is your space to nurture your identity and bloom. I'm your host, Jen Banks. Hey there, thanks for joining me on the podcast today. It is Gemini season. And what does that even mean? Well, I have Cambria Davis on today as our guest, and she is Daybreak's resident astrologist. She will tell us all things you need to know about dipping your feet into astrology and how it's a language, not a belief system. And I just love Cambria, so I can't wait to introduce you to her and to learn from her with you. Here with Cambria today of the Kaya community, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? So good. I have so been looking forward to this interview. I knew even when I was planning out my podcast season that I was going to have you on for Letter K because Kaya Community and Cambria. Not only because you talk about astrology, but also because more people need to know you. They really do. Thank you. Yes. I like a Leo's heart. <laughs> well, I just feel like every time I talk to you, it's a party and it's just I learn something new. So, yeah, I love it. Yes, I love that. Okay, so tell my listeners how you got into astrology and how that all came to be. Yeah, so I mean, I've heard about astrology. I think we all have heard bits and pieces in our lifetime. Um, it was about, I'm going to just try to remember the dates. What what year would it have been? It would have been 2017. So seven ish years ago was really when I started getting into it. I was going through what I would kind of call like a total... It would have been considered maybe a midlife crisis, but it wasn't like my midlife. And I just had this week where I was just felt like I was dying and being reborn and I was crying and just shedding like a decade worth of stuff. And my brother, who, my older brother who lives in Los Angeles, he's been into astrology long before I have. So he would say stuff and I'm like, oh, okay. Like, but I never really landed. And he, in that week period, we don't, we're not, we're close, but we don't talk often. And he called me and was just like, how are you? And I was like, I am not good. I am crying and I'm, I have no idea what's happening. And I feel like I'm going insane, but I, but there's this weird sense that like, I'm okay, but I can't stop crying. It was so, it was the most unusual experience. And looking back, I'm like, okay, well, I totally know what that was. But while I was in the thick of it, it was frightening and very scary. And, you know, your brain starts to tell you all kinds of stories. And he was like, well, he's like, OK, well. And then he just kind of started rattling off what was happening in the cosmos at the time. And back then it was it was I can't remember. If it was, I'm pretty sure it was the solar eclipse, like back in 2017 ish area near August. And, you know, or a lunar eclipse. There was something there was some type of eclipse happening. It was the lion's gate because my birthday is August 9th. And 8-8 eight, eight is a really powerful day in the cosmos and so he just kind of was like here's what's happening and I just was like whoa and then he was like text me your birth time and if not get it from mom and, and I was like okay and then over the next couple of days we just had a couple of different types of conversations and he essentially kind of gave me my first birth chart reading mm -hmm. and you know, people are like, well, he's your brother and he knows these things. But it was so spot on and so spot on. And he was talking about what I was personally trans, like transiting at that time. And where I was like, I had been doing Kundalini yoga. I'd been meditating. I spent time with a lot of time with my family and friends in this like week of melt, meltdown, <laughs> you know. And the astrology reading was like the one thing that I felt like I could breathe finally. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay. And from then on, it's just been kind of this slow, intuitive, as things have come in, you know, back in 2017, I would have never been like, I'm going to, you know, claim myself as the Daybreak's resident astrologer, and I'm going to be mm -hmm. doing birth chart readings and small group readings and trying to teach this language to so many people to, you know, involve it in their lives. I would have never thought that. At the time, it was just so powerful for me. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so, yeah, it's just been an ongoing study. And that's what I like to tell people is that astrology is not a belief system and it's just a language. And so I'm just studying this language and have immersed myself in this language. And I use that language as a tool for my life. Wow. That's so interesting to hear the start. Was, at that point, were you in the corporate world still? So I had just left. So yeah, I worked as a district manager for Journeys for a decade. And I had just left six months prior to that. Mm. And so that was the whole unraveling. So I had given my notice in December of 2016. Final day was like a week or so before Christmas. And yeah, I mean, I went from working, literally working 70 to 80 hours a week to, and I, I hadn't had my real estate license yet. So then I was like, I carried two phones. I worked all the time, you know, and at that time after I left, it went to pretty much silence. I went to one phone. I was not answering emails from 6 or 7 a.m. till 10 p.m. I was going to like school kind of when I was like, surrounded and totally distracted 24 7 and other than sleeping to total silence and that mm. is why six months later a total shedding you know yes wow so yeah. interesting how people get where they are so what do you feel like you've learned about yourself through astrology you said you're a leo what does that mean to you yeah, so my whole life, people would be like, oh, anytime I'd be like, I'm a Leo, they're like, of course you are. And it would be so annoying. And now I'm that annoying person, right? <laughs> I'd be like, oh, and people are like, what does that mean? So, um, you know, it was just, you know, I think we know ourselves or we, or, or actually, I, I'll backtrack. I feel like a lot of us might not know ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. And we've gone through life and people have been like, oh, you're shy or you're this or you. And then we've taken on those roles when we've taken on those characteristics and titles. And so now as I embrace a Leo, right, now as I fully understand what a Leo is, what's interesting is if I'm ever not feeling myself, if I'm feeling down or discouraged or insecure or depressed or anxious, I can, our sun sign is kind of our purpose. Our sun sign is our light. And so when I tap into that, the core of Leo, you said it at the beginning, anytime I talk to you, it's like fun and a party. And that is the energy of Leo. Leo is the inner child. Leo is, Leo season is in the dead of summer, right in the heart of summer. And what is everyone doing in the summer? Partying and boating and camping and, you know, this, that, the other. And that's the essence of Leo. Leo's love, attention. That's why when you're like, oh, everyone needs to meet you. Thank you. <laughs> and learning that about myself, that that's not just, that's not me being, you know, conceited or egotistical. It's actually Leos need attention. That's how they thrive, right? So, um, you know, it's in, it's interesting because your sun sign is Sagittarius and Sagittarians seek truth. And your podcast, you know, what you've done, transiting yourself into blue, like blooming right, is about becoming true to who you are. So that's your purpose, your life. So yeah, when I'm like, instead of being like, I'm a Leo, you know, there's two sides of, of every sign. Don't get me wrong, right? You know, the pendulum, right? You could, there's lots of Leos that are super self-absorbed. And then there's lots of Leos that are like, I don't want to be self-absorbed so that they're not standing in their power. So we, you know, I talk, when I teach archetypes, I talk about like the balanced part. But being a Leo and being told that my whole life versus being like, okay, what's the essence, right? And that is the play, it is the fun, it is the party. It is, you know, for me to, to feel like myself, I got to go have joy. I got to get outside. Like I love to play with my kids or my nephews and nieces or my friends. Like that's what brings me light. So it's not just this is who I am. It's like when I'm feeling dark or I'm feeling down, I go to my light. Hmm. That's so good. I hired Cambria for a girls' night, and she came over and did a few readings based on sun, moon, and rising signs for a little group of women. And it was so neat to just learn different personalities and how people are able to get back to that light. Because another thing you said about Sagittarius is 
They value freedom and independence. And a lot of times I feel trapped in motherhood. And so that was spot on. It's like, oh, yeah, that no wonder. And I've always been kind of an independent person wanting to get away from my family and live, you know, spread my wings and bloom. And so, yeah, just every time I hear things like that, it, it just rings true, the parts that, you know, resonate and that we keep. And I love, too, when you say, oh, we need to get that person some help if they aren't living in what's true to them and what rings true. So all of all of the good things. What are some examples of people not living in their power, maybe? So what I do bird chart readings, like people can use astrology for a lot of stuff, right? You, you can. Astrology, again, is not a belief. It's just a track. It's a tracking system, right? You know, 200 years ago, when all the planets aligned like this, there was the French Revolution and we're in similar times. So it's it's just a language and using that. So when people when I do birth chart readings, um, it, when I say like, oh, let's help that person or I try to do it from a standpoint of like, what is your soul's essence? Right. Like from the moment you took your first breath, there were energetics that were hitting the planet. And we've talked about this, you know, I use the moon example. Somebody can find it in a different podcast, but the energetics are there. So this is not made up and we want to try to define ourselves. It's like, these were the energetics that were happening. These were the imprints. This was the influence on us. So, you know, each sun sign, um, because that's usually where I tell people to start, what that's people's light, right? So to you, um, you talk about, you know, you feel have felt and can feel trapped in motherhood now that's a pretty if moms are being fit, really sure. honest with themselves so i would say go on a limb here but i would say most women and mothers would say that that they feel that at least at some point in time now mm -hmm. you being a sagittarius who's go and aquarius moon especially is going to feel that significantly more but when we feel things so intensely often we look through we look for solutions, right? Where we look for how can I work with that? So you have an ability to work with something that some people are affected here, but it affects you very deeply. Um, one of the biggest things, one of the biggest signs that I probably talk to about what they should be doing or what will help them are, are beautiful water signs. And I often ask, how often are you crying to like a Pisces or a Cancer? Even to Scorpio, because Scorpio is fixed water, but it's still water. And just, you know, when I, when I talk to, especially I would say men more so, because we live in a very dominant, right, masculine society that most people have been raised in. And that doesn't necessarily support men crying often. Um, from an astrology standpoint, though, that's super detrimental to them, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's kind of like when you understand the archetype of somebody's son, like for me, right? Like if I didn't ever, if I like being on podcasts, being on a, a, in front of people, talking in a microphone, those things are what brings my light out, right? And somebody's like, what do you do for a living? Oh, I, if I worked from home and I have like a really dark office and I've never spoke to another human, my soul is going to die. And that would work well for a handful of other sites. Like to them, that is it, right? For some being like, I got to get on a podcast and I got to show my face and I got to talk in front of a group of people. Absolutely not. That, that would be so far outside what makes them shine. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's the other example I thought of is thinking about someone's job or employment is what you know, are they, is it a good fit for their soul, their sign, their son, all those things? Because I feel like sometimes we just get in the habit of going and doing and into the routine and the, the grind, so to speak, but we're not truly happy if we haven't looked at what truly is our soul's calling. So that's good. Well, so many people go through that at some, it is not going to go away, right? I, I did a birth chart reading for this guy yesterday in Phoenix. Again, never met the guy. Don't, I don't know him, didn't look him up on socials. He was a referral from a referral from a referral, right? So, and, you know, I have no idea, but what his chart was telling me was um, definitely sharing that he should be in some type of 
healing space, right? Mm-hmm. You should be um, an energetic healer, potentially a trauma therapist, this kind of stuff, right? In a healing space, okay? And there's multiple things. So then I ask, like, what do you do for a living? And he's like, oh, I manage a huge sales team for long-term apartment rentals or something, something. But what, what eventually, but he's like, but I feel something shifting and changing, mm-hmm. right? And I'm like, okay, well, here's where we're looking at your sun sign. And here's, and he's like, okay, yeah, right? I don't know this guy from anything. And so I'm just seeing the chart and it's lining up and he's feeling it. He's also dealing with um, stage four cancer and Mm -hmm. going through this like really big healing journey. And so it's interesting because you said it like people's souls are not happy. So I'm this is why I'm passionate about astrology. I'm passionate because when we find our lane, when we really get there, Things just work out. Things, yes. Things work out. We get promoted or we find more abundance or we just find more peace. And you're right. We get so conditioned. We just kind of go. We just get autopilot. And being in tune with your birth chart or knowing these core characteristics, it's just like, you know, because we'll all veer. It's like, okay, cool. What feeds my soul? And then how can I make changes, especially in a job? especially in a career where we spend so much of our time, you know? Yeah. And I think you said it too. Timing is a huge thing as well with this man. He felt like it was a transition period and you had a transition period and maybe it was a good fit for a while and that's what you needed to learn and grow. But then once it doesn't serve you, then you can pivot. You are dead on the money. (laughs) Yeah. Because we have to be ready. I mean, when I was working in corporate America, I was like, dude, I, this is it. This is, I'm going to be a district manager. Then I'm going to be a regional manager. I'll be the VP someday. Like, I was like, I love this company. <laughs> you know, like, I was drinking the Kool-Aid, right? Now my whole life, whole life was planned out. And had somebody told me, you know, however many years ago it's been now, like, hey, you're going to, be doing energy work and astrology and you're going to be used i would be like what are you talking i don't even know what you're talking about like what <laughs> foreign language are you speaking to me <laughs> and i'm not going to be doing that because that's weird and your work ethic just picks everything and that's just <laughs> absolutely not how it is it's not <laughs> but this is like a see it's like a secret i feel like there's this secret that i'm trying to share with people that i want people to have that mm-hmm. has massively impacted my life for the better. And I want I just want people to be able to know because, yeah, but timing is everything. We have to be willing and ready. And it's unfortunately, as humans, we do this thing where it's not until we're sick or we are so sad, so depressed that she often turns into some form of disease that our life is just a complete mess. And then we're like, OK, something needs to change, you know, mm-hmm. oh, right? Dang it. If only we'd known this sooner. <laughs> yeah, but yes. yes, like you said, timing. Great. Well, thank you so much for giving us an introduction to all of this. So like you said, people, it would be a good, good idea to start with your sun sign and then a birth chart reading from there. Is that what you'd recommend? Yeah, I definitely. I mean, of course, I'm going to, you know, plug myself when I get an opportunity. Uh, but I would say start with a bird chart or do what you did. Get a bunch of friends together. I can come do like a small little reading. We call them your big three or your main three in astrology. But getting familiar with those because I, I get it. People hear about it and same, it was kind of the same for me. I wanted, I wanted to know everything. As soon as I started learning, my brother's teaching me. I wanted to know everything, but it comes in layers, right? It's like, mm-hmm. And take Spanish in a couple of years of high school and you haven't, you can maybe get by. But then if you were to travel to a country, if you were to live in a country that Spanish is the, the language and then be with the people and then you understand it. Like, so everything gets layered. So it's like, start with your sun sign. And most people are learning about the archetype via Instagram or TikTok. And while some of that's accurate, a lot of it's not. It's clickbait right like oh get more clicks so i would tell people like if you're interested i do birth chart readings start there and then see how it resonates 
Um, I'm also starting, and I'll share this too, is I'm starting to do monthly astrology nights, monthly zodiac nights. So whatever season we're in, which is currently Gemini, um, I will hold a, a night at Biscots or somewhere in our community, and you can come learn about Gemini. And even if you don't have Gemini, you're going to meet a Gemini, maybe raise a Gemini, marry a Gemini, whatever. But nonetheless, the energetics of what's happening to the planet are Gemini energy. So mm-hmm. then it's like, that's a great place too. If people are too scared for a reading is just like, start to learn the archetype of each zodiac. And then you can start to implement things into your life. That's so good. Well, thanks for making it digestible. It's a lot easier to take, you know, once it's like, yeah, just a little bit at a time. We, we can do that. Mm-hmm. Yes. So. So good. Well, and then you have your own podcast too. Where can people listen? Oh yeah. The Kaya podcast with Cambria Davis and Kaya is K-A-Y-A. It's Cambria is with the K as well. I've found it's easier for people to just search for Cambria, K-A-M-B-R-I-A, anywhere on their podcast platform. Because when you search for Kaya, myself included, it took me like 10 minutes to find the podcast. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, and I, and I talk about like how I got into it and my background and then I'm, my intention, hopefully, is to do like little five or six minute podcasts each season. Um, mm-hmm. I'm teaching the course of, in person. And so that's where we deep dive. But like, OK, well, it's Gemini season and here's what everyone can expect. Here's kind of the vibe for the next you know, 30 ish days. So great. Well, thank you. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Of course. Thank you for having me. Yes. So good. OK, see ya. See you later. Thank you for listening. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at A's for Adversity. I'd love to connect with you there and I'll talk to you next week.